Welcome back to Startup Fair. And uh, the first batch of uh, startup pitches are about to begin. Woo! Are you excited? Yeah, volunteers are excited, that's good. Um, so, uh, before we start off, uh, I would like to um, say a few basic rules of this pitch competition. So, in this batch, there's going to be 10 companies presenting. And every company will have no more than three minutes for the entire pitch. And that's sharp. There's going to be a person sitting here with a timer. And uh, if they run over, they will be stopped and interrupted. I'm, I apologize, but uh, please keep that in mind. Um, yeah, so and uh, after the session, there's going to be another talk, and then we'll introduce the first two winners. So, going to be out of these first 10 companies, there's going to be two winners that go to the final tomorrow. Okay, so let's talk about the evaluation process. So, our startups will be valued on four major criteria. So, you're going to be valued on the viability of the idea, the innovativeness of the idea. Uh, on execution so far in proving various points of the idea and the clarity of the pitch. So they need to understand the pitch as quickly as possible and get the basic gist. And in order to do that, we have a great uh, jury, which I'm going to now introduce. Uh, professionals, investors, and you know, startup community uh, leaders are going to be evaluating our startups. So, jury, uh, Elat Raz, Integrity Project, Gwydon Humenyuk, uh, Zevin, Yuho Risku, Butterfly Ventures. By the way, if I'm mispronouncing your names, I do apologize. Uh, we have Cornelius Chalutka, Ballcap. We have Margus Udam, uh, Ambient Sound Investments. We have Max Gurwitz, Terrace Capital. Uh, we have Patrick Johnson, MTGX. Uh, we have Sharuna Shukda, Lit Capital. And uh, we have Thomas Kosanen, uh, InVenture. Yay. Uh, so, with no further ado, are you ready? I would like to invite our first startup, No Breaks Games. Welcome. Hello, everybody. Imagine a racing game which happens on the streets close to your home. No Breaks Race uses Bing Maps and allows players to create the tracks wherever they want and challenge their closest friends. We are not the only racing game. The good thing is that players don't pick one over the other. They play them all and then they ask for more. To satisfy that crowd and to make a good business out of that, we have analyzed the leading titles and we will use their core game loop to keep players engaged, their business model that keeps those titles on top grossing list, and we will borrow some of their audience, which is already well trained to spend. Our monetization will cover a wide range of spending habits, durable, consumable purchases, and if you want to spend no money at all, that's fine by us. We will show you ads, and this will support free-to-play mode. Starting new things is risky. That's why we have created a prototype which already has nice player base on its own. The players together have traveled to the moon and they didn't make it back yet. So we are taking the best parts that kept those players coming day in, day out for six months and we are making them better. Here you see a preview of the new game. The track was creating using the same tools that we will give to our players. We will have career mode, multiplayer, and Xbox One version will feature split-screen view for extra fun. What about going to market? It's a scary thing for indie developers, but we are not new here. Another game of us, Pocket Sheep, already has half a million downloads. It's a very simple game meant to be played for a couple of hours. And surprisingly, we have good retention numbers, which shows that we can keep our players engaged. We didn't reach this alone. We have strong backup from big name companies. And we will work with those channels to push our rally game, no breaks race game also. We estimate that we will get million downloads on just the first batch of platforms we are releasing. They love us so much that they gave us money to make this game done. 
we will make the game, ship the game, reach break even. But to get on fast growth train, we need a bigger ticket. And we need your help to get that ticket. So we are looking for board and advisors from gaming industry, angel or seed round, and uh, make sure to check the demo yourself. Our boot is over there. Thank you. Any questions? Which platforms are the game on? Excuse me? Which plat sorry, which platforms? Initial launch is Windows Phone, Windows 8, and Xbox One. Net beginning of next year, we are launching iOS and Android as well. Any more questions for uh, No Breaks Games? So how have you done distribution so far? Uh, uh, can you remind me, please, how many downloads in total? For the prototype, we had 65,000 downloads. Okay. This new version is not released. We have pre-alpha. OK. So, you have, so this game, what we saw, hasn't been released yet, right? Yes. OK. And when is it due to be released? Uh, we will release about uh, November. November of this year? Yeah. OK. And you, you need the funding before that? It would be great. We have the budget to build a game, but to make it better game, we would uh, like to get some more to compete with uh, better titles. Okay, and, and about that, who's uh, my last question? Who's your, uh, who's your biggest competitor? Uh, we are targeting to compete with uh, Real Racing and CSR Racing. What is the marketing budget you have in mind after releasing the game? From this money, we will have some uh, 10,000 euros left, which is not a lot, but we have strong partners who will help to get initial players in. And uh, this is another thing why we need more money for the marketing budget on iOS and Android. On Windows, we can get the players. So is the idea that you build uh, realistic cars there on the track, if there's a realistic map as well? Yes, the cars, uh, we have advisor who will help with licensed cars, so we intend to put licensed cars in the game, yes. Any more questions for No Breaks Games? Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, please welcome next startup, it's called Timebase. Time base on stage. Thank you, thank you. Wow. Hello. My name is Paulus. I'm here to present Timebase, which is uh, an actual business. And uh, what we do is we offer software for lawyers that is doing uh, time tracking and billing. Uh, you may think that uh, there are a lot of options, but uh, it's not really true. Uh, lawyers have a very complex process where they have to confirm each, uh, each task done and multiple people have to review it and then it has to go through several people in billing before it's shipped to the client. So in reality, uh, lawyers usually choose between uh, Navision or SAP or another big accountancy software or just stick to Excel. And there is a lot, a lot of manual labor involved. And if they stick to existing software, this is really outdated stuff. This is a real torture, not only for the accountant, but for everyone in the law firm. Everyone has to use the software or use Excel or something like that. So uh, six months ago, we started doing a new, new solution, uh, which includes mobile apps. It has a web-based version, has a modern user interface, and we offer local support, which is very important for uh, security-sensitive companies like legal companies. And this is uh, how the user interface looks like on the desktop. And this is our pricing, 300 euro per year per single user. So if there are 50 lawyers in the company, this is 50 times that. 
and so far we had 70,000 euro in revenue. Uh, we are self-funded, we had no external investment, this is just more or less a real business and we have a lot of users. Uh, seven teammates in house, we have everyone in house and we're looking for 300,000 uh, euro to achieve monopoly in the local and uh, neighbor markets. Oh, I still have some time left. Well, anyway, so I'm open for questions now. Thank you. Yeah. So how many uh, law lawyers and or law firms use the, the product now? We have uh, nine clients and uh, 300 active users at the moment. But we have a lot more uh, requests coming up and we're just unable to fulfill demand. But all of those are here. And why, why, why can't you fulfill the requests? Is it because you have to customize or...? Well. It's just, you know, everything happened real fast. We started not that long ago, and uh, we are a development company. We develop software, and now we see there's huge demand for just this one thing called time base. So we're churning everything. Okay. Is there any reason why you picked regional market and not, for example, UK, US, uh, more global markets? for expansion? Not to my knowledge. Actually, we may not be aware of what uh, is in each market because I expect there will be local players. So I know there are some strong players in the US, but let's say Central, Eastern Europe or the whole Europe, there's definitely nothing out there. It's only the, the desktop software, which is 10 years old. What about the Estonian uh, company called Toggle? which is expanding pretty well. Toggle is one of those options that uh, is not really enough for lawyers. Since they just track time, maybe they can help you calculate how much that costs, but they don't keep track of you know all the price lists for each different client. All the, many clients have multiple companies paying bills. There is just a huge heap of information if you want to do it properly, if you really want to automate. It's not time tracking. Time tracking is 5%, billing process is 95%, so. Thank you. So I'll keep my answer short if there are any more questions. So is it automated, the tracking, or you have to fill still manually the uh, actual the hours or the uh, transaction that you have done for clients? So do you, do you track uh, so, multi, so all the devices that you use for the clients or how you actually use it? Well, there are many ways uh, to input time spent, and it's, each user finds its own way. Either you push start stop button, like everyone is used to do that, or you put uh, time afterwards. Um, from that point on, it's more or less automate, automatic, from the time tracked till the bill sent uh, to the client. And uh, even reminders are also sent automatically. All right. Thank you, Timebase. Thank you. And up next, we have uh, mocosi.lt. Mocosi.lt, please come on stage. Applause, please. Hi, everyone. For hundreds of years, education hasn't changed so much. But the world itself can change a lot. So that's how we came for our education platform idea. The biggest problem students are facing today is that schools do not provide a high quality education. So they are taking our private lessons, which are usually tailored to them, but they are very expensive. So students do not get access to, to, to tailor it, educational content, whenever and whatever they want and need it. So we have a solution. Uh, our platform is based on very simple, a powerful idea. It's a market. Just like Google Play Store or Apple App Store, just for knowledge. It's a place where everyone can actually learn. Our platform is a marketplace for learning content, which is created by tutors and designed to students. If you are talking about a market size, 
It's big. Almost 400,000 students just in Lithuania. About 50,000 of them are taking a private lessons. So we asked them whether we would like to choose online learning. And about 30% said they would. So this is how we came with our business model. Tutors who charge uh, students for the lessons they have created, and Moco CLT who take a 30% platform fee. So we count that our revenue could be uh, up to half a million euros per year just in Lithuania. Moreover, we have a few steps ahead our start line. Prior our MVP version, we already have more than 700 pre-registrations of students and teachers and almost 4,000 4, 4, Facebook fans. Finally, our team consists of different types of experts who cover the main responsibilities and functions. Nevertheless, we are still looking for front-end and back-end back -end developers. So, if you're interested, please contact me. Thank you very much. Questions for Mokosi.lt? So this is at the moment only for the Lithuanian market, correct? Yeah, we are starting from Lithuania. And, and you're basically replicating the school program in, yeah. in the materials, right? Yeah. Okay. And, 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 and your materials, is it video? Well, our lessons consist of different types uh, of tools. So uh, video lessons, audio lessons, uh, articles, uh, then tests for evaluation. So we are combining different types of tools for creating the full experience. But why, why would children do that uh, instead of the school well, program? Why, why are they are taking uh, private lessons? Very nice. So they are not sure. So the parents are unsure market. as well. So yeah. OK. And, Just, and, mm -hmm. and you monetize already, right? Uh, yeah. It's, as I said, the business model would be like tutors charge for the lessons. Well, of course, it can be uh, free lessons. But if they want it, they charge for the lessons. And we take 30% of that. OK. OK. Thank you. More questions for Mokusi.lt? Or it was a perfect pitch. No questions. <laughs> so thank you, then. Yeah, thank you. Uh, next up, we have Challenge Me. Challenge Me, please, on stage. Hi, my name is Dima. I am co-founder of Challenge Me. Everyone who plays one-on-one -on -one games uh, he finds himself once in a while uh, in a situation when he struggles finding someone to play with. This is uh, true for ping pong, badminton, squash, and even chess. Challenge Me, which is a web and mobile app, offers you a solution. We will find you someone to play with, but not just that. We will find you a player of the similar skill a right challenge so that you could have the most fun out of your game. Uh, challenge Me is a universal matchmaker for one-on-one -on -one tournaments. So how does it work? Using Challenge Me app, you can effortlessly organize ladder tournaments in an office or, sport, or, or sports club. The, these tournaments are long-term tournaments designed in a such a way that you will always play with a player of the similar skill. <clears throat> oh, by the way, on the, on the phone is, our, is a screenshot of our actual Android app. OK, so it works for offices and sport clubs. But what if you're on a vacation, or you went uh, uh, to a different city for some reason, or you're a freelancer, or finally you just want to break out of the office and have fun with everybody around you? We have a solution for you, too. We take data from all local tournaments and combine it into one global rating uh, for all uh, players. Uh, then we add geolocation to it. Uh, the result is that you can uh, always find you someone to play with of the similar skill anywhere, anytime. 
We have some indirect competitors. These are web applications of sport clubs for ladder tournaments. But those applications are clumsy, they uh, are strictly local and have no mobile version. Then there are uh, application for elimination tournaments, but these applications are for short-term time box tournaments that have a clear beginning, clear end, and they're also strictly local. There are hundreds of millions of people worldwide who play badminton, tennis, uh, ping pong, and other one-on-one -on -one games. We want uh, to become number one social app for sports for all of them. Uh, we are not planning uh, to make our users pay in any way because we don't want to hinder the growth of the user base. Instead, we plan to use uh, sponsored tournaments. Sport equipment brands will be interested in reaching our audience and other big companies might be interested in uh, promoting healthy lifestyle in their offices. Uh, then uh, um, many one-on-one -on -one games require a venue to be played in, so we will do affiliate marketing with venue booking services. Currently we are in Obo Open Beta. Uh, we have uh, we only ourselves and our friends are using that, but in the next six months we are planning to have a few hundred active users. Once we have them, we will start actively looking for funds. Uh, this is Challenge Me team. Thank you, Thank Challenge you. Me. Thank you. Any questions? Have you thought about the market size? What's the addressable market that you can reach with this one? Could you repeat, please? You're talking about the market? Yeah, the addressable market, the market size. What about this monetization model? So have you calculated at all what you can reach with this one? Uh, these uh, numbers come from the sports plus science portals called topandsports.com. Yeah, not, not, not the users, but meaning that the, how much money you can make with this one. Oh, have we haven't calculated that. No, we, 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 we have no idea right now. How. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> How often do you think uh, average player, for example, of tennis uh, will be using your service? I'm um, playing tennis. I mean, okay, I'm for looking for the... There are, there are many different cases. I got a uh, question. Thanks. Uh, for instance, in office, people are playing at least several times a day. Uh, if you have a whole, uh, ping pong table in office, I know myself because I played, maybe up to even 10 times. Those who play after work, maybe two, three times a week. So it depends on the sport and is it a sport club or office. But I think those who play in office, they play really often. But, but you're playing usually with your friends or people you know. You're not looking for... Okay. Yeah, but you know, in the office there are also people's, uh, people of different levels. You don't really want to play with anyone. You want to play with specific guys and you need this tournament so to restrict you to only this group. Because if there is a guy who plays much better than you, you will go, will play with him and you will s suddenly lose and you will feel awkward, he will feel awkward, if vice versa, the same thing. I played myself in offices and I know that because there are only a few guys that I want to play to and I need some system in place to ensure that. I don't want to play to simply with anyone. Be and what's more important, when you're playing with a guy of the same skill, only then you evolve in your sport, only then you have fun. When you play with someone who is much stronger or much weaker and even a bit stronger and a bit weaker, you do not evolve, you just lose or win and that's it. You need a confrontation, like for a long time. <laughs> Is it um, a lifetime bus uh, lifestyle business for you, or you would like to sell the company in coming I, years? I want to, I want to make, it, make it into a real business and to mm, make money. So it's not lifestyle. <laughs> but I like I, uh, kind of both, I would say, because I also would use this app, uh, and I'm using already so. So who you have in mind? Who could buy your business in five to ten years, for example? I don't know. Maybe in Domondo, if they have enough money. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Any more questions? No, oh, thank you. Thank you, Challenge Me. Thank you. So next on stage, please give a warm, warm welcome to Simple to Act. Simple. No? Simple to Act. Have you ever been in a conference or a presentation? Oh, you are at one now, so have you ever sat that far and wanted to ask a question? The problem is that people could not hear you for sure. 
Of course, there are always events where they have guys running around with the microphones, but you might face several issues such as holding microphone, spilled coffee, and huge time consumption, which is all leading to a mess at the conference and poor event performance. You do not want that. And we've got a solution. So we took one simple device that all of you have with you 24-7, all the time. You know all the features of it, you know how it works, you know how to speak with it. Yes, you, I mean your smartphones. So we took a smartphone and enabled it to become a wireless microphone. Comparing with the existing solutions, let's have a look at Steve Jobs' access. And apparently, Wireless microphones are not so smart and not so easy to use. Throwable microphone catch box, well, you would not like to be hit by a microphone during the conference, right? And the Twitter speaker cannot control the flow of the discussion. Simple to act is smart and easy to use solution. So let me show you how it works. Let's say you have a question. So you have an app downloaded, you press the button, you wait for your turn, your turn comes, you speak. That's how easy it is. The main advantages are that it requires really minimal internet connection, and more, even better, we have a really great quality sound because your telephone already has over two microphones with it, which allows to filter all the noise and echoes. And even better, it's really convenient. You know how to use your phones, right? You know how to talk with it. Most of the people, when they get a microphone, they do, still doesn't know how to use it. So our target customers are conference organizers who are going to pay per event, and conference centers who are going to pay monthly basis. We're also going to charge for advertisement. We're a great team. Henrika, CEO, product development, me, sales and marketing, and we have a developer with a 13 years of experience, uh, three of those working with voice over IP system. We're looking for 300,000 euro investment. Thank you. Simple to act, easy way to ask questions. So now I'm looking forward to hear yours. Thank you. Thank you. Questions for Simple to Act? So it's a mobile application that people have to download to be able to ask questions. So how are you going to get people to download all the participants to the application to their smartphone? Yeah, so um, as you all know, Login also has an app at the moment. Basically, all the conferences and events are getting apps, and it's getting there or there on the way. So uh, we are planning to make a platform, uh, an app with all the functions that, for example, this uh, app of Login has, just we are going to implement a microphone. Um, taking the market, other that was happening in the USA, for example, they are downloading around 95% apps at the, during the conferences. Do, do you have a product already? Have, have you tested your product already? Do, do you have a prototype or you have a already finished product? Yes, we do have a prototype at the moment. We are testing it at LCC International University. Uh, we are developing it to make a product. We already have some word agreements with conference organizers who are willing to buy it and looking forward for us to develop it. We are also preparing future features that will appear as fast as possible. And we, and we are testing it right now. I'm standing behind you, right here. <laughs> Yeah. So, what kind of technology is this? Uh, in general, it works on wireless. So, you Wi Fi? Yeah, on Wi Fi. Uh, of course, we know, we are aware of the risk of disappearing wireless. So, it requires a minimal uh, amount of it. You can, for example, for the phones, it's enough to get 3G. But for the computer from which the sound is, is going, uh, it needs to have a wireless. So, that's why we need investment. We know how to do things uh, without internet. Our goal is to make an app which could be working without internet. That's our goal for the future. <clears throat> what, <clears throat> what would that be? Would that be Bluetooth or? We what? could discuss this after if you would like. OK, secret. OK, okay very good. <laughs> <laughs>
Any more questions? No, it doesn't look like that. Thank you for a great Thank presentation. Uh, so please welcome our next startup. It's called Shortest. Shortest on the stage. Hi, my name is Cornel Schweier. I'm the co-founder and the CEO of Shortest. Shortest is an advertising network based on links that are being spread all over the web. But unlike other ad networks, we don't need even a single pixel of your precious web space. All you have to do is to put a small JavaScript code on your website, and we will monetize your external traffic, the one that you lose every day. So you might ask, what's the problem that we want to solve? Uh, we are tired of seeing all those annoying, unmatched ads all over the web, and this is what we're going to change. Our solution is to develop a unique targeting technology that will allow us to display only those ads that will match with actual user needs. OK, with the knowledge about user age, location, interests, or his needs, we can eliminate this problem that I was mentioning before. Our advantage, uh, we know from where user is coming to us and we know where he's going to, placing us in the middle. And with that unique knowledge, we can match ads to user needs uh, to show him some additional info about the things that he's looking for or suggest him an alternative. Our goals, the first one is to finish our development, our work on the targeting technology. As soon as we'll have it, we want to overtake the link shortening market. And after that, we want to step in and take a really strong position on the advertising market. At the moment, we have two strong competitors on the market. There is few indirect competitors that we will have to face as soon as our technology will be ready. OK, that's pretty obvious, but we're working on the advertising market, which is worth over $130 billion this year. And the projection shows that the market is getting bigger and bigger, and it will reach over $160 billion in 2016. OK, icing on the cake, traction. Shortest was launched in 2013 at September. And during that time, we proved that we know what we're doing, that we can do it, and what's the most important, that what we do is really needed. Over 500 million page views, over 170 million unique visitors. Average time on site where the ad is being displayed is two minutes. So as you can see, it's quite impressive. Uh, very important information, we are profitable. We reach our break-even point in January this year. OK, so uh, you know the product. It's time to meet the team. There are seven of us creating Shortest, covering design, development, marketing, and sales. We've been working on different projects before. We learned a lot, and we use this knowledge to develop Shortest. Uh, last but not least, we are not looking for funding. Uh, we are looking for business partners. Thank you. Thank you, Shortest. Any questions for a short test? No, not no questions. Hey. Uh, I might be a bit stupid, but I, I didn't quite get how does it work. How does it work? Uh, you found a link on the internet. There's plenty of them. You click it, and you are being taken to the site when we display you an ad. After five seconds, you can skip the ad and go to the place where you wanted to go in the first place. So instead of placing a lot of different banners or, or, or some verticals on your website, you can monetize your links without any ads on the site. So the link owner or the website owner's motivation to do this link is to get the sort of a part of the ad revenue? Uh, yes, definitely. We share uh, what we uh, get from ads with, uh, with our publishers, with website owners. So you sell them uh, ads yourself, or you, uh, do you use some uh, ad networks there in between for the inventory? Or Once again, can you? Do you use some uh, external ad uh, networks for the inventory, or how you actually sell the ads? Yes, at the moment we're using external ad networks to, to monetize our inventory, but uh, we want to step in and uh, develop our uh, direct sales so, so we can be independent.
Can you describe your target customer as precisely as possible? As precise as possible. Website owner with white uh, audience who is uh, tired of uh, placing all different ads on his website. Uh, many mm, white range uh, website owners uh, remove ads from their websites and they just use pop unders to monetize their traffic. So uh, we want to eliminate pop unders as well and we can simply monetize the links. So as soon as they uh, lose their traffic, the external one, they will earn money. So anyways, somebody is leaving their website so he can see an ad. Any more questions? Yeah, it looks like we have no more questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Short test. So uh, our next startup is called uh, We Robots. Please welcome We Robots on the stage. Hello, login. We are a small web scraping and automation company. And for the past 15 years, we have been working for some major market data companies in the world, and we found that they have one common problem. They have hundreds and hundreds of analysts who spend all day doing copy-paste of data on the web into their systems. So we want to automate those jobs. But today, there are no really good tools to accomplish this, and that's why we started We Robots. Essentially, we made a platform which can do anything that a human being can do on a browser. The way it works is that we record some actions on the browser, that becomes a robot, and then we can run it over and over again. Let me show you in more detail. We just open a web page in recording mode. We select data, which we need, and then that becomes a robot. We have a data feed. We can refresh it every day. So more than half of the traffic on the web is robots, not people. So we have a lot of competition. But most of our competition are using simple scripts, and they do not handle websites that have JavaScript and dynamic content as well. Well, our advantage is that we use Chrome browser, which does all the complicated stuff, and we can create those robots just like that. So now we have about 50 robots on our platform. I'll show you a couple of what, uh, examples of what we do. Here you can see our robots are scraping data of bus routes and bus schedules for another startup, Traffy. And you can see it's a lot of data. But we can refresh it every day and capture any schedule changes, etc. Another example, this is one of our public good projects. We scrape data from uh, exercise tracking websites from runners in Vilnius, then we throw it on a map, and now people can see where are the most popular places to run in Vilnius, find and explore tracks. So in closing, I want to just emphasize that we are a company that wants to provide data sets from the web for other companies. We are B2B, and if you are a startup or have a startup that needs data for their growth, please talk to us. Thank you. Any questions? Hi. You have chosen Chrome as your execution engine. I'm sorry. You have chosen Chrome as your execution engine. How much latency does it add to the crawler system? Sorry. I'm asking how many times the, your robot takes to, to scrap a page because you're using Chrome, so probably a lot of pages is being loaded and unnecessary data. This, if you need to scrape many pages fast, uh, you can use simple technology, but uh, time is not really a problem because we can run multiple instances of our scrapers in parallel and scrape pages that way. Time is money. Any more question for we robots? What is the business model and pricing model behind your service or products? How you would define it? 
business model is that uh, a lot of industries uh, need data scraped from the web, but we want to target financial data industry. That's where is we come from. And uh, that industry is 20 billion a year. Of course, it's dominated by players like Bloomberg and Reuters. But essentially, the way this works, we would charge, for example, per robot and then uh, maintenance fee. Uh, are there some limitations of uh, what kind of data you can actually crawl there? So does it have to be in certain format or you actually can take it almost anything? Uh, we can deliver data in almost any format. Usually it's some kind of database and uh, customers API can take it from our, our API. Any more questions? Uh, we have one question in the audience. Use your smartphone. Uh, okay, uh, I was wondering how do you get around uh, how do you get around uh, the issue that uh, some sites we have a registration uh, secured places where you have to register the user to get to the data. How do you cope with this problem? Because our platform can emulate anything that a human being can do with the browser, robot can log in. So it's, it's not a problem. Uh, thank you, we robots. Thank you, guys. Uh, up next, we have uh, one of the most prospective startups on the Lithuanian ecosystem. Uh, please welcome Domas from Dragdis. Woo! I'm pretty sure that most of you are familiar with this kind of mess. Yeah? Or this. Where you can't find anything you need. So why the hell do we end up like that? Unfortunately, it requires effort to be organized. For example, to save this image in an organized way, I need to second click, click Save Image As, find the folder in the folder system, click Folder, and then click Save. And I need to do it every single time. So sometimes I'm going to be too busy or too lazy to go through all these steps. And I'm just going to you know, save to the first place I can, and create a mess. Drag this will change that once and for all. Because we drag this, all we need to do is just drag and drop. Drag a link and drop it to your read it later folder. Uh, drag a video to Twitter. Drag a piece of text to your research folder. It is extremely simple and People so far are loving it. We, after spending a year in close beta, we launched just last month, and we have 32,000 users. Um, what's even more exciting, they dragged over 1 million times. What's even more exciting, that we spent $0 on marketing. Our user acquisition is built in into the product. Now, to understand how this will make money, you need to understand that a drag and drop is an expression of intent, as uh, a search on Google is. With Google, you see ads based on searches. With drag this, you will see ads based on drag and drops. And as our business, our product, our user acquisition depends on the amount of the drag and drops our users are making, we will enable them to drag and drop anything anywhere. So SoundCloud to Facebook, text to Evernote, you know, files to Dropbox, so on and on and on. And we eventually going to make drag this as a platform for developers to build their own apps on it. Last year, we raised 200,000 euros from Practica Capital, and we assembled a team of six people. Now we are looking for uh, data analysts, mobile developers, uh, business developers, and of course, Series A investment, because we want to make we want to make drag this experience the default experience for everyone. So let's talk. 
Thank you, Dragdis. Any question for Dragdis? So you said at some point that your user acquisition is baked into the product. Can, yep. you, can you explain that? Yeah, so uh, you can not only drag to uh, drag these folders, uh, but you can drag to Facebook and Twitter, and soon Tumblr. And every single time when that happens, on Facebook, there's a little you know, text uploaded via drag this. On Twitter, it's uh, via drag this. So people click okay. that and get to drag and this. How many of your 32,000 users come from, from viral uh, social media marketing? Yeah, so from this ex exact point, there's uh, not, you know, not even the third of it, because we, we didn't roll out this functionality like in full you know, energy. Uh, so, but as I said, we're going to integrate with Evernote, with Dropbox, G Drive, Tumblr, with all these guys. What yeah. about the retention so far? The retention? Do users keep using yeah. it? Yeah, so there's a lot of users using us like even more than a year. But uh, for the last month, we, half, of the, I mean, half of the user base is uh, coming back. So on a weekly basis, it's one third. We have one million drags. One million. It's crazy. So is this cloud-based? So can you use it all your devices the same drags, or do you drag them on your computer, or how does it work? Yeah, so how it works, it's um, the, you know, the sidebar that pops up when you drag something, it's uh, powered by extension that you install in a browser. So it works on Chrome, on Firefox, and Safari. Now, on any platform, so uh, I mean uh, Mac and Windows, both. But can I, can I access my drags with my iPad, for example, then? With the iPad, you yeah. mean? You mean in that if I drag on my computer or something, yeah. can I, do I have access on my mobile devices to the yeah. same drags? Don't tell everyone, anyone, but we're launching a mobile website today. So from today on, you can you know, access anywhere. OK, I won't tell anyone. Yeah, OK. Thank you very much. Uh, any final questions for Dragdis? Hello. Last time I've checked, Dragdis doesn't create folders for the, for the files or text you drag, right? Sorry, I didn't get that. Can you? Dragdis doesn't create files or for folders for the files you drag. You mean it doesn't store on your computer or, or no, what? No, no, no. I mean, when you need to organize the information, you create uh, folders. And you said there was a research folder, there was a, a read later folder. Does drag this create those? I, I sorry, I'm, I, I'm not getting you. Are you talking about subfolders? Yeah, I mean Abs the structure, how you organize the information that you drag. Uh, sorry, we have can, to. Can we chat like one on one? Uh, sorry, I didn't hear you. Really yeah. sorry. Uh, thank you, thank, Thanks again. So, uh, next on stage we have Intentex. Please welcome Intentex on the stage. Hi, everyone. My name is Dorin Sandulescu, and I want you to meet our friend Andy. Andy here. He's working in the sales department. And let's just say that he's not the best salesperson in his office. But after exchanging a few emails, he's about to land a huge client. And then he sends one last email. Now Jane here, who's the client, she reads the email and suddenly the whole deal is off. Andy has no clue what he did wrong. He doesn't know what happened. Now, the interesting thing is that in the time it takes for me to say this sentence, about 20 million emails have just been sent. And about 90% of the time, the person who's reading the email thinks that they interpreted the message as it was intended. But in fact, only half of the time they are right. So now let's get back to our story. As you might imagine, Andy's boss is extremely angry and is desperate because he knows he messed up once again and he's about to lose his job. And Jane is furious as well. But luckily for Andy, he discovers our new text analysis technology. So he analyzes his email and finds out that the tone of it was too negative and even pushy. In order to fix everything, he decides to write a new email to Jane. But this time, our system alerts him that the message is too negative. So just as easily as working with a spell checker, 
Andy is able to correct the tone of his message by simply changing some of the problematic words which are pointed out to him. And then our system approves, so he can send the email. Now, in order to make all this possible, we have been working on our technology for a good number of years now, and we're finally ready to launch it. And we don't just focus on emotions. In fact, this is just one of the seven different categories of results that we currently have working right now. Now, behind this technology, we have a team of specialists across different fields, at the center of which is Vadim Dehtiar, Lithuania's first trainer of neurolinguistic programming. He studied how language impacts people with the co-creator of NLP. But now let's get back to our story. Here's Jane. She reads the last email that she received from Andy, and this time she feels excited. And she changes her mind and decides to go ahead and make the deal after all. Her response changed as a result of Andy's improved communication. As you can imagine, Andy is extremely happy, his boss is delighted, and Jane is a satisfied customer. Now our goal for Intentex is clear. We want to take this from a startup and grow it into an international market leader, into the field of text analysis and communication tools. And we're looking for an investment of minimum 500,000 euros to set up a development office in Vilnius or in Lithuania and, and create our end user products based on our technology. So if you're looking for a startup with huge potential, I recommend that you remember this name, Intentex. Thank you. Any questions for Intentex? So, how many languages do you support? Uh, for now, we support English and we're focusing on the American market, so American English, mostly because there are some differences with British English. So, you, so your sales and business development will be in the States, not yeah, in Europe? Yeah, it will be in the States and later on we'll probably add more languages, popular languages like German or French, but we need to do more research for those. Okay. And, and, and your sentiment analysis, is that's fully your own technology? Or are you using some other uh, technologies for No, it's, for it's this? our own technology. Some of the research is done like officially in universities and it's public, you can access it and view it. But a lot of the research that we have done is ourselves, especially the parts that come from neuro-linguistic programming. Who's your customer? Who are like the perfect our customers, customer. yeah, uh, for, for now we're focusing, well, our, our market is range, we can impact a lot of people, but we're focusing mostly on businesses, anybody who works with client services and who sends a lot of emails. We also want to focus on politicians because it's a tool that can create powerful influence, uh, give, offer powerful ways to influence. And after all, it's, it's for anybody who communicates in English, who has a website, who has a web presence and wants to communicate more effectively and get his across better. So where are you going to integrate this to? So is it a separate product or integrate to browsers or word processing software? So where are you going to email software? So, uh, so we, want, we want to integrate this with the email clients and CRM systems. We have built like an API that we can connect and offer custom solutions. Uh, but most of this will be uh, on, on the cloud so anybody can just access it. Can you also use this technology to sort my mailbox so that good news are in one folder, bad news are in folder for tomorrow, and so on? Well, you know, we have the technology and we just want to develop the front-end products. We have a lot of ideas. That definitely is one that we can do. Uh, we just need to create the actual products, the interface for them, and, you know, just as easy as making email alerts, we can create that as well, of course. Any final questions? No, doesn't seem like that, right? Yeah. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Intentex. So uh, we came to an end of the first session. We have one last startup is going to be presenting. So last but not least, I would like to invite Job Rulai on the stage. Job Rulai. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I want you to think for a minute. Did you ever notice that people you really, really want to achieve, to reach and have in your company are currently passive? Passive in the job market. For me, it was quite the same. 
Then I was building the job related team. I needed for my team the best people I could have in HR who have experience in the foreign markets, in IT and business intelligence, in sales, marketing. And I managed to get the best I could. However, these kind of people weren't active on the labor market. But relax a bit, because people you want to hire are actually easily found, because we are part of someone else's network. Therefore, we made an easy-to-use online solution, which is a referral system, or in other words, a crowdsourced recruiting source, where user easily, in few clicks, can recommend a person he knows and who is suitable for your positions. And at the end, he gets a cash reward. So user is really motivated because he gets the cash, as I mentioned, because the system is really easy to use and it, it attracts all the information, gathers it, and at the end pro provides you a really good feeling because you helped your friends. And you get your personal job opportunities as well. For the companies, it's easy. You get the rated and sorted candidates list, so this means that you are saving your time on recruitment. And your message is spread wider because you get additional publicity. And at the end, well, some of the re recommenders are the people who are actually working for recruitment. Our current state, just in one week, we managed to attract 10 companies and to have more than 15,000 liters to give away for our users. And we loved it. We already got 140, made 140 recommendations just in a week. But however, however, this is really short time. So for growth, we need 300 case investment, which will be used for expansion, mobile presence, and of course, development and integrations. So we have a vision to become a connection between a business who is seeking for employees and companies. Companies who have talent pools and who can recommend and suggest people. So please contact me. Let's speak about how you can join us and be a game changer in HR and recruitment market. Because the current recruitment doesn't work. So thank you and I'm open for your questions. Any questions for Job Rely? Oh, everybody's waiting for the break, as I see. No questions. No. Okay, thank you very much, Job Rely. Okay, so we have come to an end of the first pitch session. So what's going to happen next is that jury will tot up their scores. And after next speech, we'll announce the two winners. So when jury is, is deciding who are going to go to the finals, let me introduce